The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTD's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm Joey Tysick. Across from me, Malik Hill. And uh, we actually have some Pistons news today. Breaking news. Oh, are you on a different one? Oh, geez. My bad. <laughs> Great start. Are you prepared to break the potentially the biggest news of the season? No. So I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Detroit Pistons have traded away Kevin Knox. Woo! Some some Pistons what do we get? fans what do we get? What would do we say get? he's the most promising Pistons player we have. Kevin Knox. Which some people love him for some reason. It's wild because he we had a few good games. We all wanted him gone last year. Yeah, and they gave away a second round pick. I think. Yippee. Yep. And a and the rights <clears throat> to a former second round pick from 2022. Yes, Gabriel Procida, who's looked pretty good overseas. Watch him go to Utah and become a young, really good player. Yep. Ooh, or Utah, you say? Did we get Laurie Markkinen? No, we didn't get him. Uh, uh, we didn't get Jordan Clarkson. Did we get Colin he's Sexton? He's in his 30s. He's too old. Oh. Colin no, we, Sexton? Did, we didn't get Colin Sexton. He's going to demand a lot of money. Oh, okay. But what we did get is a man with one of the best names in the league. Okay. Which is important. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's important. You're right. He also shoots 40% from three, which helps. Okay. Well, that's. Yeah. Only averages like nine a game. He he plays his role. Okay. He He takes open shots. He's not forcing stuff. Okay. Simone Fontecchio, <laughs> the oh. one and only. Great. Okay. How can you yeah. forget? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, this is this is another in the long line of players overseas playing for the Pistons. Ugh. We had Carlos Delfino. We had Walter Herman. Shouts out to the goat, Walter Herman. Jonas Jerebko. That long uh, ponytail he had. <laughs> Jonas Jerebko, Mimido Core, one of the the pioneers. Darko Milicic. We can keep going. <laughs> now. <laughs> We add Simone Fontecchio to the list. All right. I'm sure. Yeah. There's, going, will, there's going to be a Fontecchio fan say, club at the game. He's going to be a fan favorite, <laughs> yes. I'm sure. Absolutely. Especially if he starts hitting some shots. Yeah. I mean, right on the team right now, Bogdanovich. People love him because he hits mm-hmm. threes. He's kind of goofy, but he makes buckets. So. Yeah. In, in the grand scheme of things, he's he's just he's another role player. He, he'll give them production off the bench because he has played well for the Jazz this season. Yeah. And the Jazz ha- are coming off a stretch of winning, like, I think they were, like, 14-2 and two in, like, the last 16. They've gone on a really good stretch recently. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, yeah. The other funny thing about the Pistons that I just thought of, too, is um, the whole Zach Levine news. As the weeks have been rolling, there was a lot of thought in the league that the Pistons were looking to acquire <laughs> Zach Levine. And then he decided to have surgery on his ankle, yeah. or yeah, it's his ankle, right? I can't remember his leg. Listen, all the, all that matters is he heard the news and of what was probably it coming. was optional surgery. Yeah, so that tells you Shut probably, down. you know, um, his agent probably was like, "Hey, you know, Pistons are looking at you." He's like, "Okay, let's get surgery." Yeah. So I don't know what the heck the Pistons are going to try to do for the trade deadline. At this point, I'm almost at the point of let's just not doing anything, even though apparently now, too, there's been rumors that uh, Killian Hayes wants out. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, what, we want what, you out, too. What league, What? where have we come? Or Killian Hayes, first of all, has a camp <laughs> yeah. that probably put this news out. Right. And, and secondly, he wants out. What, who, who cares? Yeah. I go. Right. Go back to France. <laughs> You're, you're you're probably a good kid. You're probably a good person. Yeah. Just go home and get your mind right. Go put up 25 in a French league. Yeah. Get your confidence back. That's a good like, point. Dante though. Exum left mm-hmm. and came back, and he's more confident and a better player than he was when he first got in the NBA. Yeah. Gillian yeah. Hayes could try the same same strategy. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, even just a change of scenario or scenery. Yeah. But I don't know. At this point, we can't. We can't talk about this team. We got Fontecchio, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. Yeah. 
Um, if anything happens at the trade deadline, we'll talk about it. Um, but again, we're saving most of our Pistons talk till the end of the season where we're going to try to get Chris on. And yeah. A, a good dive. state of the union where we yeah, <laughs> yeah. let him rip, <laughs> right. let him go. Um, however, the fun part about the NBA right now is we are getting ready for the All-Star game. All-Star game itself, not that exciting. The All-Star weekend, more of what I look forward it's, to. It's still, it, it doesn't hit the same. Man. No, it doesn't. But do you like, think the three point shootout is basically like the most exciting thing left at yeah. this point? But do you think so? I was thinking about this when we talked earlier. But do you think that it's more of like a nostalgia thing, or do you think it's just actually not as good as it once was? I think it's not as good as it once was. I think the NBA doesn't know how to handle this anymore. Mm-hmm. Like All Star Weekend is is just marketable by itself. I think that's what they think at this point. Yeah. So they don't put in like the creative ideas and time that they used to. Right. Like I still watch the dunk contest last year. I was excited because I've been a Mac McClung truther for a long time. Right. And he won the contest as I expected he would. And he's Mm -hmm. back. Yep. And they got some other dudes that'll probably do some really nice dunks. So I'll be watching. Yeah. But yeah, the excitement just isn't there anymore. Like Mm -hmm. before we started this, we were talking about the shooting stars challenge. I think is what it used to be called. Yeah where each team that they selected got a legend of their franchise, a current like all-star top player and a WNBA player in the same city. Mm -hmm. And they went from area to area hitting shots and it ended with a half court shot. Yep. I used to be excited to watch that. Right. And it usually came down to the half court shot. Yeah. And funny enough, a lot of the times it was like either the WNBA or the legends player that would hit that half court shot. So yeah, they need to figure something out. And I don't know what it is at this point. Um, because obviously, like the stars aren't going to come out, they they haven't in years, and that's kind of been a lot of the problem. The stars come out for three point shooting. Yeah, true. You can still get guys for that. Yeah, but for the dunk contest, it seems like it's dead and gone. Yeah, and then um, I mean, all star Jalen Brown the, is the, all like, star. The rising players, the so rising guess. stars challenge is pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Jaden Ivey and Jalen Dern are going to be in that. Um, so that's usually somewhat competitive because some young guys that are trying to fight for for spots sometimes. Um, for me, actually, I like the celebrity game a lot, depending on who's going to be there. I used, it's another thing I used to like a lot. Yeah. They used to get some like really high level celebrities. Now they got like three Peloton instructors. They got, look, serious. There were like three Peloton instructors last year. I haven't looked it up. And I was so confused about what was happening. I didn't understand it. Like those, I I don't know, man. Maybe, Maybe so celebrity. Has celebrity hasn't changed. They're just picking horrible people. <laughs> so shouts out to the Peloton instructor. <laughs> but the, this I did forget on. that they did. Like do Justin that. Timberlake and Brian McKnight used to go back and forth in these games. Justin Bieber, Kevin Hart. Although I didn't like when they started doing Kevin Hart. He won like four straight of them yeah. of the MVP, so it got kind of old. But yeah, right. like let's keep the level of celebrity up like yeah. it used to be. Wait, that can't be right. Who is that? Sorry, I'm looking up the, um, the uh, the the players on this year's celebrity game. I saw someone that was I I completely forgot who I saw the other day. That's how much I don't care anymore. But I have to. Is the list up? Yeah, anywhere? I'm I'm gonna read it in a second. But I was really confused because right away, in the first name that I got is Jennifer Hudson, but it's not Jennifer Hudson who you'd think it would be. The youngest female EGOT, which to me that seems like Europe's. No, what is that? What is EGOT? You got? Yeah. That's uh, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Shows you how cultured <laughs> I, I am. I know some pop So culture. I guess. Is it Jennifer? So it then it has probably to be, is Jennifer then. Hudson, yes. Then it has to be. I was th- So for me, for some reason, my brain was thinking of like America's Got Talent or something like that. Um, wow, that's funny. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. So if it's Jennifer Hudson, I don't know if she's any good. She'll or not. just be out there probably. NBA champion, Metal World Peace. Yes. NF- yes. NFL superstars, Micah Parsons. Okay. And CJ Stroud. CJ probably has a nice jumper. And then we have IndyCar Series racer Connor Daly. Okay. Don't know who he is. Uh, Grammy Award nominated recording artists AJ McLean, Walker Hayes. They always throw a country singer and like a Latin yeah. Grammy winner in there. And then Sir? 
Sir, Sir is an R and B artist okay. that is very good. Okay. People should look into him. Sir is very good. I've never heard of him, so I'll yeah. take a look. He's from California. He's not like very famous, mm-hmm. but yeah. And then we got Grammy Award nominated musician Adam Blackstone. Don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Emmy Award winning entertainer Lily Singh. She's a yeah, like a she was a social media comedian. Okay. I, I think. think I know who that is. She was on YouTube. <laughs> Actors Dylan Wang and Quincy Isaiah. Quincy Isaiah played Magic. Really? Yeah. That's that's who I saw. Okay. That could be interesting if he can actually play. Okay. Because he's like, he's tall. And okay. <laughs> and he looks good in the show. Oh. I don't know who the other person is. Here it goes. Streamer Kai Sanat. That's not a surprise. It. That's all. And then that's content all. creator Tristan Jass. He has a nice crossover I and he like actually it. plays basketball sometimes yeah he does he has some skills so i don't hate him. i don't love his game but was that That's, like the, just one team and then we got basketball entertainer jack ryan and james beard award-winning chef kwami Anwuachi. there's always one person that you don't know that can actually like play there's probably so we'll got to be a couple more people because i think the teams are usually kinda it big. sounded like you just listed one team yeah um we got olympic high jump champion jean marco tamberi Oh, let's, I remember him. Let's see him dunk. I think he was the one that did that got the the tie in the Olympics last time mm-hmm. around. I I think. Um Latin American music award winning yeah, recording artist. Exactly. And well and U L double A. It's their second yeah. celebrity game. There there's always a Latin artist and a country artist. And then there's always two of those. Each team will also feature a WNBA star. Yeah, that's all that's the usual. There's there, all there's always two legends. And too. right now they Meadows have there. Jewel Lloyd. And Natasha Cloud. Okay. And it looks like those are all the players. Oh, so, oh, the coaches are almost more interesting than the teams. The coaches, it's Team Shannon versus Team Stephen A. Okay. So. the the Their yelling and shouting is going to be, like, more pronounced than the game. So, the Team part. Shannon is Shannon Sharp. Along with his assistant coaches Peyton Manning, oh boy, and Fifty Cent. That's gonna be that's gonna be entertaining. And you know <laughs> I they got to tune in they, they typed out Curtis Jackson Fifty Cent. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so they have they have Micah Parsons on their team as the only. I don't know if he can play basketball at all. I don't know like, either. Miles Garrett was in the Cle- in Cleveland dunking on everybody. Right, and DK Mac- Metcalf was dunking on everybody too. But um, and then. Coach Stephen A, his assistants are Asia Wilson and Lil Wayne. That's going to be hilarious. Oh, yeah, I'm tuning in for that. Just for <laughs> entertainment value, I'm there. But they have Meta World Peace and CJ Stroud, along with Tristan Jass. Like, their team just seems a little better. But you never know. There can always be the former defense secretary of the U.S. that I think he's college done, ball. But he is a baller. No, I know, but I'm just saying yeah. there's always that one guy that you don't expect. That could maybe do something. Like, so. well, come on, let's let's get Bar- Barack Obama. He, we haven't seen yeah. him in a while. He can shoot with the lefty a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's get some higher caliber people. Right. So that's your list celebrity. Of game. Celebrities are decent, better than last year. I think. Yeah, it's it's kind of hit or miss, of course. And then the 2024 Panini Rising Stars. That's who's sponsoring it this year. Uh, we got Team Pau Gasol. So they keep changing this because then they did, they did the, like the world versus the U.S. a couple times, and they yeah. they used to do rookies versus sophomores. Rookies versus sophomores is how it always should be. In should oh, be. this one is four teams. So that's how they. Oh, yeah, is that's that what they, they did last, last year? Yeah. They did like knockout, like rounds. a middle, uh, yeah. a quick tournament I, where I about you that. go to a certain score. Yeah. Okay, so we have Team Pow, which has Victor Wembanyama, Brandon Miller, Brandon Podziemski. Uh, Jaime Jaquez, Jamari, Jabari Smith, geez, Kaysen Wallace, and Bilal Koulibaly. I'm uh, going to be honest. I'm not going to have like any real reaction to any of these rosters. Uh, All I have to say is it should still be rookie sophomore. Well, we need to root for Team uh, Tamika because we have Paolo Bancaro, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Keegan Murray, Scoot Henderson, Keontae George, and Dyson Daniels. I'll root for the Pistons players. And then we have Team Jalen, which is Chet Holmgren, Jalen Williams, Ben Matherin, Shaden Sharp, Derek Lively, uh, Jordan Hawkins, and Walker Kessler. That's a pretty good squad, actually. 
Um, and then Team Detlef. Oh, these are all G League guys. Izan Almansa, Modest Buzelis. The G League team is terrible this year, Ron so Holland. I don't expect them to be. To Mac do much McClung, Tyler Smith, Oscar Shibwe, and Alondis wow. Milt Williams. Just give the ball to Mac and Buzelis. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to compete. Ron Holland is like the one of the highest ranked out of those out of that group. Him mm-hmm. and Buzelis. So, I guess. Interesting. We'll see what happens. Um, the skills contest is apparently up in the air. I still can't find it. They don't have like exactly what the game is going to entail. I'm not watching it. Okay. But it sounds like there's going to be a team. Like they're going back to doing a team. I guess it could be similar to last year where they did like the passing thing as a team and they get certain points. They're probably going to do something like I'm that. I'm going to be honest. I'm Making it mini remember. games. I Who was in it last year? I don't remember. They had the team, the like rookie team though. With like Paolo Jabari, did Cade do it? I can't remember. This sounds like you're making this up. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something. That I'm pretty happened sure in 2K. they did something like that, though. You could be right. I don't know. Um. Okay. On to the 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 main events. The three point challenge. We also have the like side three point challenge. I don't know yeah. when that's going to happen. I don't know. Either. Steph Curry versus Sabrina Ionescu. I think that's what most people are going to be locked into. How do you feel about that? Finally having an NBA versus WNBA contest. I'm excited to watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they talked about it last year. People started thinking about the idea. Mm-hmm. It's it probably it really won't tell who's the uh, Steph is like right. the greatest shooter of all time. Yeah. Even if so, I've listen, I I have some friends that say if Sabrina wins, it's scripted. I don't know. Uh, I'm excited to watch it. Supposedly, I don't know how it's going to go down, but supposedly originally they were both going to shoot from their respective lines, the NBA and WNBA line. They're also going to use their respective balls, the NBA and the WNBA ball, separately so that it's somewhat of an even playing field. But then people called it out for not being even because WNBA is closer, whatever. Um, So then Sabrina said she'll shoot from the NBA line. So I'm curious if she's going to do that or not. Um, Either way... I do feel like this could be one of those scenarios, though, where Steph Curry just says he's not losing, and he just goes crazy. Could be. Or he might be too amped up. I don't know. But that'll be fun as kind of a side little gig. I think it, they're they're both donating like charity or something like that. So that should be cool. The actual three-point contest is featuring Malik Beasley, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Halliburton, Damian Lillard, Lori Markinen, Tyrese Maxey, and Donovan Mitchell. I'm not sure why Jalen Brunson is in there. He's not one of the best three point shooters in the league. Yeah, but he he has his nights though. So like in this kind of contest, he does heat up he does sometimes. But maybe get going. I mean, like Don, Dante Divincenzo is like more of a the why shooter is, on the team. Why is Malik Beasley in this? You can always say that though. I mean, he all he does is shoot threes. So yeah, I can see why he's in it. Who do you think wins? I wouldn't this? have put Malik Beasley in it though. Who do you think would win this? Um, I think the favorite's probably Dame. I'm going Halliburton. Hmm. I think it might be Donovan Mitchell. Every time it leaves Halliburton's fingers and that weird release happens, it just looks like it's going in. Hmm. Every single, like, and it rarely ever touches the rim when he hits threes. I don't know why his release is so accurate. Yeah. But it, it just works. Mm-hmm. And when he's in the zone, it's, he just he can hit from anywhere. Yeah. And it looks effortless. Laurie Martin I'm going Halliburton. Could- Lori Markinen could be another sneaky one because usually like the bigger guys who have the, the higher release don't take as much energy. Sometimes they can win because this takes up a lot more energy than I think people people realize. It'd be fun if they had uh, in his brand new newly minted Pistons jersey, Fontecchio, in oh, the three-point shootout. 40% three-point shooter, ladies and gentlemen. Premier, his premier Pistons debut. Yeah. yeah. He goes out there and finishes last place. <laughs> Five threes for Simone Fontecchio. Uh, or he wins and just, his hypes and people hype it up. That just reminds me of back when Brandon Inge was in the home run derby. You remember that? Did you watch baseball back then? I used to watch the home run derby all the time, but I can't remember. So the Tigers player, Brandon Inge, was he was also like a fan favorite. He had like 28 home runs or something at the time. And he was like one of the home run leaders that year, which was kind of an anomaly for him. He got in the home run derby and hit zero. Something like that. And this was the old rules when you got like 10 outs or whatever. It wasn't timed, but he had 10 swings and misses. It was so disappointing. 
Um, so yeah, um, I, I think I lean towards Donovan Mitchell, but like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Lori did something. Um, and then we got the dunk contest, everybody's favorite contest out of, I would say out of all the all-star events, whether it used to be people's favorite contest. Yes. That's where I was getting to the NFL, NHL, everything. The dunk contest was always like the premier event. And that's why everybody strived to get to not so much anymore. We talk about it every year. Um, but your contest players this year, Jacob Toppin, Jalen Brown. Okay. Okay. Some name value there. Mac McClung, former winner. People know he's a good dunker. And Jaime Jaquez, who surprisingly, like we said, has some bounce to him. Yeah. So not too exciting <laughs> lineup, even though, you know, it's it's cool to see some of the young guys these days, but Jalen Brown being the highest star power. I don't know what Jalen Brown has. Have you never watched a mixtape of like Jalen Brown in college or high school? I mean, like I've seen some of the old like, college. Stuff, I've seen but... him easily like three sixty between the legs, like yeah. two dribbles, nothing. I would say like he can do almost any dunk if he wants to. I would say if he could just dunk with his left hand, that would prove a lot of people <laughs> wrong. <laughs> that would be great. That would be hilarious. He's dunked with his left hand I multiple know. times. Sure, yes. I don't know why I'm defending him so hard, <laughs> but. Um, Listen, I'm I'm taking Mac again. Yeah. When if Mac McClung is in anything, I'm taking him as the winner, and I'm riding with him. I think he just has the most creativity at year. this point. Yeah. And like again, he's he's like the G League guy that they're allowing to get into dunk contest, and he's just he's got something to prove. Like this is his time to shine. All these other guys, well, maybe Jacob Toppin maybe has some stuff to prove, but like Jaime Hawkins has already had a really good rookie season. Jalen Brown's been a multiple. Out multiple time all star at this point. I, I I don't know if there's the drive for those guys. Yeah, I've I've also there are clips of Jacob Toppin. Like his head is right at the rim mm -hmm. every time he jumps. Yeah. And he does some crazy stuff like in warm ups and practices. How, how tall is he? I think he's like six nine. Okay. So he's yeah. like right on that verge of almost being he's like too tall. Just like right under his brother. Because yeah. Obi's like close to six ten. And see he's like six nine. Six, eight, what six, didn't nine. you and Chris like Obi Toppin's dunk contest when he did it? Uh, yeah, it was really good. Cause I didn't love it, and I think it was just from an aesthetic point. And to me, it was like what Amari Stoudemire's dunk contest should have been when he was in it. Okay, but like Steve Nash was doing a lot of the heavy working with his passes. <laughs> yeah, like sure. Obi Toppin was doing some creative stuff. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Am I interested in the All Star Weekend? A little bit, but I. Not sold on it. Like, if I have other plans, I might think about those other plans, <laughs> unfortunately. But, I don't know. Do you look forward to the All-Star weekend at all anymore? Same. Just a little bit. Just, like I said, the three-point shootout, I'm there for it. The celebrity game is entertaining. Mm -hmm. Plus, and that's usually, like, Friday night, I think, late. So I thought it's Saturday night. Is it? Yeah. Oh, is it before everything? The the Rising Stars is Friday. Celebrity game is Thursday night, I think. Oh, Thursday. Rising or it's or it's before the Rising Stars game. I think it. I think yeah. it might be. Before, I think before. yeah, Celebrity game then Rising Stars on Friday. Okay. And then the main yeah, event yeah, yeah. stuff Saturday. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. And then the All Star game on Sunday, which nobody cares about at all. Yeah. Adding the target score made it a little bit competitive. Yeah. And they're going back to an East and West game, right? I think this is the first year they're going back to that. They didn't. They're not doing a well. Yeah, I don't so, think they're doing a draft. They're just doing East and West, which I kind of like. But anyway, that's enough NBA talk. That's the most NBA talk you'll get out of us for a while, till we maybe get to the playoffs. Um, college basketball. Like I keep saying, every week, ramping up the talk more and more and more. Um, and this past weekend had some good college basketball. UCF knocked somebody off again which is funny. They're still only, are they like two games above 500 or something like that? Yeah. Uh, so they're a team to apparently be watching out for. Uh, Malik's Aztecs getting back into the top 25. Looking good pretty good right now. Um, and then Malik's other team, Michigan Wolverines, um, continue. My other team is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Yeah, I forgot. But we can talk about Michigan if I just, you like. I just want to hear, like, I know we keep going over it and we'll we'll slowly dwindle away from it as the season rolls along, but 
like, what? Like, where does this team go? I know we keep saying, like, fire Jawan, but at this point, like, there needs, like, a culture shift in the program at this point. Michigan is the worst it's been since they were playing under sanctions in the early 2000s. That's how bad this team is. They are the bottom of the Big Ten. And it's even worse to me because their talent, they have enough talent. If John Beeline coached this team, they would make the tournament. Yeah. They're talented enough to make the tournament. But they don't do anything very well. Mm-hmm. Like, they can never be good enough consistently on offense. Their defense is terrible. It's clear that they just don't have a connection as a team. And Jawan Howard is making it clear with quotes that a coach going out soon would make mm-hmm. saying stuff like, I wish we had more guys that cared. Yeah. Uh, you recruited them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and these are your guys. The you, the first few years when you had beeline guys, you didn't have that problem. Right. Because they already knew what the program was and they, they knew how to play basketball and how to win. Mm-hmm. Now you have all your guys and they just don't know how to play basketball and they don't care. Yeah. So pretty good sign right there. Uh, yeah, they, they need another beeline type of shift mm-hmm. where a guy comes in and from top to bottom just changes every way the program is run. Because mm-hmm. Tommy Amaker had Michigan at like a below average to average level before John Beeline came in and completely turned things around. Right. And it took him like two to three years mm-hmm. to but like then, get on track. And then with that like program, like they rotated guys out constantly because they were starting to get guys that would get drafted pretty often, but they would just reload, reload, reload. Yeah, like, John Beeline was all about development. Mm-hmm. He was now he had those those classes like the like the Mitch McGarry, Glenn Robinson. They mm-hmm. were like high four star guys. Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway, and like yeah, but Trey Trey Burke wasn't a four star. True. Guy. Yeah, yeah, and. I get oh yeah, Karis yeah. LeVert wasn't. Yeah, Nick Stauskas came out of Canada, and most people didn't know him. Mm-hmm. He developed players right. that he knew fit into a system and had talent, mm-hmm. and he was great at projecting. Yeah, and he got the best out of guys every single class he had. Juwan doesn't know how to do that. He just doesn't, mm-hmm. and it it reflects on the court. Yeah, and they now, and now they get to play Wisconsin tonight. Yeah. And I hope it gets ugly. I hope they lose by 50. I hope things fall apart. And Ward Manuel has to make a decision immediately. Yeah. I don't think it, it will. It could take as long as it took John Beeline to get the program turned around because they were coming off some really dark years. This is like the bottom in the past 20, 30 years. But people know like the Michigan brand. People have seen what Michigan basketball was in the past decade or so. It doesn't, it shouldn't take much for a very good coach to come here Mm. and get things on track. Right. Like you see what Lamont Paris is doing at South Carolina right now. He doesn't have any superstar players. Nobody, people assume they would finish bottom three in the SEC. Mm -hmm. They're ranked top 15 right now. And he has them rolling just because he's a very good coach basketball coach right and he knows how to build a basketball program Mm -hmm. michigan needs that again a guy with experience a guy that knows how to build a program and get things on track and just coach a a good basketball team yeah and a good program like i I, michigan fans aren't asking for much like we know like getting another beeline is close to impossible like he was the best that michigan could get Mm -hmm. like just get just a guy that can consistently make some good basketball. I, I, it's I'm saying it, it over and over again. Just being the top but half of the Big Ten. That's what I'm saying. Like, can we get a guy that can finish like consistently top five or six in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. and not hit these bottoms? Yeah. Like, can we become what Northwestern has become? Which is crazy to say, right? But good for Northwestern. They're like top six ish mm-hmm. in the Big Ten. Yeah. With what they've become as a program. And as now, we, who, who knows if they'll stick there for a long time. Right. But that's what they've been in the past two, three years. And as we've seen, like, they're being them, them being top six, they already beat Purdue and they almost knocked Purdue off again. Yeah. So, like, being top six is no knock in the Big Ten. Like, Everybody that steps into Northwestern's program knows they have to learn the culture, but they know what it is. Yeah. Once they get going, mm-hmm. like, it's smart basketball, it's moving, it's cutting, it's hard like defense 
it, it's principles that every player in the program knows they have to go by. Yeah. Michigan doesn't have that right now. There's no culture. There are no principles. There's no identity. Mm-hmm. And they have to find it again. Yeah. Um, and then as we always talk about on the other side, Michigan State, more just roller coaster of a season. Every time, literally every time it feels like they get momentum, they just blow it somehow. I didn't even check the finish from last night, then yeah. losing to Minnesota by three. So they beat Michigan, obviously, a couple weeks Who ago. Who would have had Minnesota being better than Michigan State on their bingo card this year? Michigan State beat Maryland by nine, so you're like, okay, they're beating the teams they're supposed to, and then Minnesota comes in and they, they beat Michigan State by three. Hey. In an ugly one, I know. I don't know if you noticed. I did. Cam Christie. Five threes. 11 points a game. 41% from three. Yeah. Five threes against Michigan State. He wasn't even as highly ranked as his brother Max. No. But, hey, another Christie hitting yeah, threes in the know. Big Ten. Yeah. Just and against, he's starting for Minnesota right now. Yeah, and then Izzo had to watch that probably. I don't, yeah. I'd, <laughs> that had to hurt mm-hmm. for Michigan State fans watching that. Yep. And now they're yeah. going to play uh, Illinois in a couple days here. Yeah, this, this, this isn't a recipe for – like long term success this season. Like no. Tyson Walker, we all know he, he has to play well for them to win. Mm-hmm. But eight of 18, 20 points, like, yeah, that's not, that's not what you want. Yeah, Jaden Aikens, 11 shots, 16 points. He was efficient. But yeah, the rest of the starting five, six points, two points, four points. Yep. Off and the bench, two points, four points, two points. And that's what we keep saying. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, all of a sudden, like, Malik Hall had a good game against Maryland. And then against Minnesota, he gets four shots. Like, what is the consistency there? So at this point, I, I would like to, like, talk to Tom Izzo. Like, these players have been here for four years. Yeah. And they have the same patterns mm. they had when they first got here. Yeah. Like, I, how does that happen? Right. A.J. Hoggard turned back into what I knew him as. He had a few games where he hit, like, four and five threes in the past two weeks. Everybody last year loved him because he had some big games down the stretch, played good in the tournament. I've always hated him. Nothing personal. Um, just didn't like his style. And, uh, I liked his game in the tournament. Where, did, what happened to that? That is why he came back and he's just been a shell of himself. Same with Jay Nakins. It, it's just, oh, Jay Nakins is better than he was. He's the second best player clearly at this point. Yeah. But again, the way he finished out last season, you would have thought he would have made a bigger step and just, that's been the whole program for years now. They cannot make that next step. And it's just like, I don't know. The development has just, what happened? Like I know. What happened to the development? It really wasn't that long ago that they beat Duke in the tournament. But even then, they were still struggling with that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. They just. Who was the last Izzo recruited player that was a top player in the nation? That's the problem. I don't that, know. That's the problem. Why Why has that happened? Because I, I can always argue that, like, Cassius was... Cassius or Miles Bridges? Is that the answer? Probably. I would think so. That's been four or five years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Yeah, that's, that's the other thing. You don't realize, like, it's already been that long. So... What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Talk and about- also, we haven't even mentioned the freshman class that was supposed to... Yeah, bolster what the veterans had. Still haven't seen them. Yeah, you look at freshman player stats. I mean, we've yeah. seen them, but yeah, Xavier Booker three points and two rebounds. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Fears, we know what happened with that. Yep, he would probably be a piece on this team, so that hurts. Cohen Carr played four Cohen, minutes. Yeah, Cohen Carr, he is a super athlete, but I, he's just not great at the game of basketball yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a shame. Because I, I feel like Michigan State is just – they're similar to Michigan in the fact that they're talented enough to be better than this, but they just cannot I, – I don't know what it is. They can't get it done. And it's it's the inconsistency that I think is the, the most frustrating with this team. Tyson Walker, 19 a game. Malik Hall, 11. A.J. Hoggard, 11. Jaden Higgins, 11. Mm-hmm. And then a complete fall off. Yeah. But in all those averages, like like They're I said, shooting sixty eight percent from the free throw line. I did not. 
<laughs> I did not rough. realize that as a team. Especially they for sixty eight percent. Especially for an Izzo team, because people always talk about, well, Izzo's always in there shooting free throws on his own after the games and or after practices or whatever. Like he's so focused on free throws. Well, get your players focused on free throws, apparently, or something. Like, they have two players shooting over eighty percent, and both of those players shoot exactly eighty percent. Yeah, this is why when I like to say to people that always talk about college basketball is like it's way better than the NBA and people are like well I watch college basketball because they make their free throws then you must not be watching college basketball very much because their free throw percentages are usually below the NBA's um anyway uh before we move on quick quick stats from last night combined six points from the center position in that game nice and five shots between all four big men Mm mm-hmm that's what I've been saying for the last. What is Tom Izzo te- teaching those these four or five years that we've been talking about? <laughs> that has been their biggest problem. They have no front court. What happened to like the Xavier Tillman type teams, the Jer- Jaron Jackson teams, Draymond Green, even to a certain extent? Like they used to have guys that would just kind of play like bully ball, and they don't have that anymore. Like what happened, Maddie Sissoko? He's not that guy. That's why the I, I I would like to maybe we could get a Michigan State fan in here one day. Especially again, like the biggest like thing. The, too, I, I want to know what happened to development in that program. Like, the Big Ten has always somewhat revolved around guard play and big men. We got the guard play at Michigan State, but there's no big men, and we haven't in years. And that was like a thing that they were known for 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 a while. So. Nah, I don't know. It's frustrating. Tough state of basketball of, in, the, like, in Michigan. Even the type of guys, like one of my favorite Michigan State play, uh, players in the past was Brandon Dawson. Like those kind of guys that are just good college players. He was players, dirty work, but, elite right, athlete. Just tough, yeah. strong. Cohen Carr could be that, but right. yeah, Brandon Dawson was very built, though. He was like 230. Yeah. But um, like they just don't have any of those guys. It, I don't know. They don't feel like a Michigan State team that we're used to. I don't think they felt like it in a few years. And this is still the same. This is the same coach, basically the same staff. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't figure it out. I don't know. You think the D'Antonio problems are sneaking up? Yeah, I think so. Where nobody can tell him anything. Yeah. And he's going to start getting, like, angry soon. 100%. I just think, again, I, I keep talking about it. We've said it a couple of years now. It's like all these other college coaches keep getting out of the game. You would think that Izzo would start catching on that, like, maybe I should get out too while I should. Because he already doesn't love the way that the game has changed. Doesn't love the transfer portal. Doesn't love how NIL stuff works and all that. But if you don't like it, just just get out. There's no ill will. Like, I'm not going to say – that Coach Izzo is just a bad coach in general, but the times have changed, and I'm sure Michigan State fans will give you all the flowers in the world because you've been the longest tenured coach and you won a championship and stuff. So it's like, okay, you just call it quits. Let's move on. Let's try something different. The best team in the state of Michigan is Oakland right now. How do you feel and about that? Listen, it it hurts that I have to give my my college basketball enemy. Greg can't be credit. They have figured out some rotations. Mm -hmm. They've. Ah, ah, he annoys me because if they don't make the tournament, then listen, we're back to being sworn enemies. Yeah, it's it's gone away a little bit. Okay, but he's going to do that same stuff when we get to this to March. Mm -hmm. They're going to have this nice run in the regular season. Was it? Did they just beat Cleveland Uh, State? Was that who they beat? Recently? Uh, let me see real quick. They, yeah, they just beat uh, Cleveland State. They beat yeah. Robert Morris by 15 two games ago, and then they beat Cleveland State two days later by 12. Okay. So they're in a groove right now. They're in a really nice groove. Blake Lampman is on an absolute heater. Mm. He's hitting like four threes a game for the past week and a half. Okay. it's He's been on fire. He's averaging 15 or well, 14 a game, shooting 40% from three. On. It looks like a so lot he's, of the, he's having his best season. Looks like a lot of the normal Horizon teams are struggling right now. 
Yeah, there's, Wright State. There's been some fall off. Uh, Purdue, Fort Wayne, Northern Kentucky. Those are the teams that in the last couple of years have been really good. And we can't forget to mention that team at the bottom. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the winless Detroit Titans. They were close um, against Robert Morris. They lost by like seven, I think, or something. Talk about a program with no hope. They're like the DePaul of mid major right now. Yeah. Who do you who do you get? I, I have a I have a few ideas of who they should get, but I'll Yeah. Oh <clears throat> yeah. Go for it. Just I I have no idea Listen, who's it's partly biased because I know him closely, but I also know the connections he has in the Midwest and how he can coach Mike Covington at Oakland University. Okay. Could get it done at a lot of these schools, but yeah, that's just a, a sidebar right there. Yeah, I saw somebody but, I yeah, didn't realize that really tough jobs. Yeah. Athletic departments are a mess. I didn't know that Mercy was uh, winless. And so I saw somebody put up a a graphic the other day of the combined Detroit basketball teams. They put the the Titans and the uh, the Pistons record combined. And it's like six and 67. And I was like, wait, don't the Pistons have six wins? And then that's when it hit me. And I was like, wow, they're winless. It's unfortunate. Shouts out to Oakland basketball. Yeah. Ten and three in the division, they got a yeah, chance. Fifteen and nine overall, they yeah. have a chance. But have, like I said, you, you we you better do it. Have they played Green Bay yet? Uh, yes, they did. Okay, uh, January twenty fifth, they lost by ten. That's a little bit upsetting. But uh, everybody else, they've kind of taken. Oh, they beat. They did beat Green Bay early though in January, so yeah. they've already played them twice. And they got a game tomorrow at Northern Kentucky. Mm. Should win, but who knows? The yeah. horizon can be difficult. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of those other yeah. crazy divisions. So interesting. It would be nice to see Oakland back. We haven't seen Oakland in a long, long, long time. And there's a reason. Was the last time? Yeah. The K Felder era. No. Really? They never made the tournament with K Felder. <laughs> They let, isn't listen, that a shame? You're gonna get me going, Joey. <laughs> if we do this, let's talk about it. <laughs> because I remember specifically they didn't make it in the Kendrick Nunn. I era. watched three teams when I was in school there that should have made the tournament, <laughs> not make the tournament. Yeah. And then the year after I graduated, Kendrick Nunn, Kendrick Nunn came in. Mm-hmm. They were even better. They won like two games in the tournament. Still lost. Couldn't make the tournament. Yeah. I mean, in the con- they right. lost, they won two games, two or three in the conference tournament. Mm-hmm. Still couldn't make it to the yeah, title. Because I remember specifically they didn't make it to the, the big dance. Yeah. Shouts out to Kendrick. Shouts out to Javen Cumberland. Shouts out to Max Hooper. Yeah. Those all those guys. Yeah, that was I a good squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the K Feller era was also another one though. But yeah. It, it so, was it was electric at the L arena during those years. It was yeah. electric. It seems like any time they any time they've had an era, they haven't made the dance. Last time they made the tournament was 09, I believe, when I was in middle school. Mm. Yeah. Was that the Travis Bader team, or is that another team that didn't make it? That was um, uh, Benson. So, uh, I forgot his first name. He made the NBA. Oh, he got drafted. Yeah. That was that was their team. I know who you're talking yeah. about. My mind keeps saying Cedric Benson, but that's... <laughs> yeah, Bader. I don't think Bader ever made the tournament. Yeah, I think he's another or, one. Or maybe he was a freshman on that team. Yeah, because yeah, the the year I went to Oakland mm-hmm. was the fall of 2014, and Bader graduated the year before, so maybe he was a freshman on that on on nine team. Okay. Yeah, because that's it's unfortunate. I'm never gonna be able to find it, but oh wait, Oakland men's basketball in the NCAA tournament. I'm trying to look up the. The actual stat of the last time that they did it. Um, 2011? Oh, 2011? Okay. Is that correct? Maybe, I guess it was Travis Bader. So, yeah. apparently, what I'm seeing, 2011, they lost to Texas. They lost to Texas in the second round. Wait, what? That doesn't make sense. I don't know what this is. I'm scared that it's wrong, but it might be 2011. I don't know why it says second round, but they didn't win. They they haven't won a game in the tournament. <laughs> no, it doesn't show yeah. that they won a game. So, um, 
but it's showing they beat Tech or they lost to Texas eighty one to eighty. Maybe it says second round because it's not the first four. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure either. And then before that, they got blown out by Pitt. Got blown out by North Carolina before in you just, You're just going through the history of Oakland's tournament games. I mean, there's not that many, so it's... <laughs> True, Greg Campy. Anyway. True. They should have made it at least three times in the past decade. Yeah, because they won... Back when they were in the Summit League, they won in 2010 and 2011. They won the Summit League. I didn't remember they won the Horizon League in 2017, though. Interesting. They They won the regular season... Uh, yeah, it's yeah. regular season. They won the regular season multiple times. Mm-hmm. I think they won it twice with K when I was there. Okay. Because they would like run through the regular season and pretty much dominate for the most part. Yeah. In 2017, okay. 16 or 17, they beat Washington. They went to Washington and beat them on the road. Yeah. They almost beat, listen, uh, I'm not, I'm not. I'm so not 2011 doing. is correct. That was the last time they were in the tournament. Um, They did lose to Texas. 81-85, so they had a close game against Texas. 2010, they got blown out by Pitt. They did win in 2005. They beat Alabama A&M, only to go on to lose to North Carolina by 30. I still can't figure out what the 2011 team was, though. Because Doing I'm, an Oakland deep dive. I know. I want to, though, because we, <laughs> we keep forgetting to talk about them, though. So, like, I'm... I'm curious now what team that was. Um, because that was like when I really liked the uh, watching the teams. No, I need the year before, please. 2010 to 2011. Go. And this is Travis Bader. He was a freshman? 2010 to 2011? I thought he was older than that. Hmm. Um, Drew Valentine was on that team. Reggie Hamilton. I'm not saying anything because I don't feel like ranting about Greg Campbell. Keith Benson. Stupid thing. Keith Benson, yes. Keith Benson. Corey Petros. Shouts out to Corey Petros. He was a senior my freshman year, I'm pretty sure. And he, yeah, he, he averaged was, like 18 and Because he was a freshman on that team. It's actually a pretty young team actually when they made it. Listen, Oakland was Oakland Oh, they have Larry really Wright my too. whole time they were there. So Larry Wright, Keith Benson, I think those are kind of the guys. Anyway, enough Oakland talk. <laughs> um what other college teams do you want to mention real quick at the moment? Uh, and then we'll talk about Super Bowl. I got to go back in cuz I <laughs> just looked out. Um sorry for the Oakland uh, tangent, but it's all right. It's my alma mater. I, I, I can't get very mad outside yeah. of talking about you know who. Mm-hmm. But Dayton still winning. Uh, they just came off uh, beating St. Joseph's ninety four to seventy nine. Dayron Holmes actually didn't have a big game in this one, mm-hmm. but they still they just had an overall really good game. They're nineteen and three right now. Yeah. South Carolina's finally in the top 25 and in the top 15 for the first time in school history. They just came off of a win at home against Ole Miss. Mm. It was a sold-out crowd. They had a whiteout. It was like a really good atmosphere. I watched the whole game. Okay. So, yeah, I am love what Lamont Paris is doing there. Mm-hmm. Really always love the underdogs and the surprise teams in college basketball. Right, as we do. I think UConn. Might possibly win back to back championships. I kind of keep because they myself, look like head and shoulders when they're on. They look better than everybody. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the same thought that I've been having lately. Is yeah. like they just look really good, and I don't know if anybody else looks as good to be able to maybe do it. Um, yeah, like their their five star freshman Stefan Castle was hurt to start the season mm-hmm. and kind of like took him time. He's starting to roll now. Yeah, like he's like scoring like double digits easily. At this, he had twenty one against St. John's. It was like four of seven from three, barely missed a shot. They they got everybody like working at a high level at this point. Yeah, Danny Hurley is building a monster again at UConn. So then, outside of them, I'll do this question, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, right now, who would be like a tournament favorite from you? 
would it be UConn or maybe there's another team that you could think of that also might be a favorite? Going back to back is hard because the tournament is also as right. so unpredictable every year. Mm-hmm. Even though, yes, I would give UConn a good chance, but I think Kansas has a great chance. Mm-hmm. They're so well rounded, and now they have Johnny Furphy emerging. Yeah, the six eight kid from Australia, true freshman, and he keeps getting better. Yeah, he's he's a really good shooter. He has skill on offense, but he plays in his role because Bill Self doesn't let people just go crazy when they first come to Kansas. Yeah, and it took him like the first few weeks of the season to really get acclimated to the game. Mm-hmm. But like I said, once he's got comfortable, he's been playing great, and their mix of experience and youth is just. It's worked very well, and Hunter, Hunter Dickinson has just done his job right as they like a go-to big man. So, I'd say Kansas is like my second most favored. Okay, I was gonna say my team right now, and I, I mentioned it to you earlier in the week, and it feels weird because they seem to be the team that usually blows it in the tournament. But I like Tennessee right now. I if, do too. If they can stay healthy, if Dalton Connect is healthy, I think they. Yeah, they're in every game because even last year they they probably could have made a a decent run if uh, it was a Kai Ziegler that got hurt last year, right? Just yeah. before the tournament, um, they probably could have made a better run last year than they did. Um, and yeah, Dalton Connect is he's fun to watch. He's almost unstoppable. Yeah, like and, he's going to get he gets thirty when he needs to. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of team like if they get hot in the tournament. There's a chance that they could do something, and that, that's the team that I, I like right now. Um, again, I'm still rolling into watching more college basketball, but that's who I like right now. Plus, I also like Purdue just because the fact the last time that a team lost as a one seed, Virginia came back, won it the next year. So something to keep an eye on, yeah. I would say. And uh, I'm going to give my first wild card tournament team that could make a run and this is going to be like 90 percent favoritism but they're back in the top 25 and they're strong again mm-hmm. the san diego state aztecs okay. <laughs> every year malik in this uh, every year yeah but honestly Jaden ladee was a role player for san diego state last year mm-hmm. this year he's averaging 20 and 8 yeah shooting almost 40 percent from three like he's taking his game to a whole nother level they're playing just the same kind of scrappy basketball, not making much many mistakes on offense, mm-hmm. getting good shots, and just I I just love the way they play. I love the culture they've built. Yeah, and having Jaden Ladee break out like this, you always need that one guy mm-hmm. that can give you big performances in the tournament, and it seems like he's the guy now yeah. for San Diego State. Mm-hmm. So yeah, ninety percent favoritism, but I'm just gonna give them the wild card tournament team even yeah. though they made the championship last year for the first time mm-hmm. my first wild card yeah my uh my wild card would be another team that i mentioned earlier uh, before we started would be probably new mexico just because they're another team like they shoot the lights out um if they can get into the tournament they got jalen house jamal mashburn jr uh donovan dent like they all average they got like three 15. guys averaging 15 yeah. which is yeah really impressive right and uh they just shoot the ball well, so they're one of those teams that could be dangerous if they get going into the tournament. But again, Mountain West, you kind of mentioned it before, it's a tougher conference to get in, so you almost have to win your conference tournament. So something to watch out for. All right, we only have a couple minutes, so we have to mention the Super Bowl. And this only deserves a couple minutes. <laughs> Are you rooting for a team in the Super Bowl? No. Honestly, no. Is it just because of? The disappointment from the Lions? That's a part of it, but I'm just not – I don't have, a, like, a favorite player from either team. Yeah. Like, we all acknowledge Pat Mahomes' greatness. We all acknowledge Christian McCaffrey's greatness as well. Yeah. And I like both players, mm-hmm. but, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, seeing Brock Purdy win it would be really fun. Yeah. Like, the last pick in the draft last year, getting to the Super Bowl now. and. Mm-hmm. Beating Mahomes, that'd be a crazy story. A lot of doubters. Yeah, like I'm I'm not paralleling this, making this parallel to the greatest of all time, but it would kind of be like Tom Brady beating the greatest show on turf in 2001, mm. even though it, it's the Rams were like favored completely. 
Yeah. Most people thought the Patriots didn't have a chance. Mm-hmm. The 49ers have a serious I'm pretty sure they're the favored right now. Exactly. But just like player to player thing. Yeah. Yeah, like an underdog story. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I think the Chiefs are going to win. Yeah. Like going against Pat Mahomes at this point, even though Pat Mahomes has lost one Super Bowl and it was to Tom Brady, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to go against Pat Mahomes. Yeah. I kind of feel that too. I just, Patrick Mahomes has left such a sour taste in my mouth uh, this year. After all, like the the complaining, it feels like he's been doing lately. Um, it just feels like he's been the greater whiner. the greater a player gets, the more this happens. Yeah, like I, I think that that's why a lot of people didn't like the how Jordan handled stuff. Yeah, Tom Brady was the same way. He got really aggressive. Like, I think this happens with all players that like reach a certain level that Maybe. is kind of unattainable for most players. Yeah. They get more vocal with the refs because they know, like, what's going on at all times. Mm-hmm. They expect to get certain calls, so they get they talk more. Yeah. It's just how it is. Right. And then I'm tired of Travis Kelsey at this point. Like, I don't know. They're just, there's a persona against and the Chiefs, and that's kind of the, the annoying part. Whereas before, like, I liked the Chiefs just because they were so talented. Um, even though they were winning, I get tired of teams winning, but... I liked the talent on the team, but I don't know. Like, I guess I lean towards the 49ers, but that also make me feel bad because then it's like, well, the Lions held their own against the Niners means they could have possibly won a Super Bowl, and, like, that just kind of hurts. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's something we didn't talk, we didn't talk about. Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn are coming back because that really happened, good news for the Lions. like, Right after, yeah, last week. Um, so Lions off season looking good. So I can't be too mad at that. But yeah. um, and when it comes to the Super Bowl, I'm more excited to uh, eat some good food, have some drinks, and watch Usher perform at halftime. One of the greats. Yeah. Um, the only the other thing that stinks about Super Bowls nowadays is like the commercials get shown all week leading up to it. They show previews of commercials. So now. there's there's usually not. As many, and there also aren't any classic commercials really, yeah, anymore. So that's kind of the disappointing part. I really like the Paramount Plus commercial. That one was really good. I think that that was, that was very well put together. Yeah, I I kind of hope that there's like a second part to it during the actual Super Bowl. Um. Also, the last thing that I'll mention, I might be watching the Nickelodeon Super Bowl <laughs> because I don't know if you saw, but they're gonna play uh, what's Sweet it Victory. Sweet Victory. The uh, updated version. Yeah. Because they weren't yeah. allowed to last year. They only played like the first five seconds of it. So apparently they're going to play it this time around, the whole thing. So I might be tuning in to see that because that'd be exciting. That's a childhood thing. The rest of the game, probably not. But yeah, I'm not, I don't really care who the MVP is, to be honest. Yeah. Seeing one of them get slimed would be funny. Mm-hmm. Another childhood thing, but yeah, who cares? I like that uh, the commentators are Nate Burleson, Patrick Starr, and I think... And two kid commentators. Yeah, like, like Nickelodeon. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty great. So, we'll see. Anyway, this is Views from the Sidelines uh, next week. We'll talk more college basketball again. I'm diving more and more into it. Trying to get more uh, smaller conference teams into my wheelhouse to start getting ready for that March Madness episode. That it's, it's coming up. It's coming right around the corner. And... Um, Maybe we'll have more information about NBA stuff, trade deadline stuff. Um, we'll recap the Super Bowl, I guess, if it was exciting. If it's not, we'll just <laughs> fly over it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, next time.